The UK seems to have outfreedomed the US as they announced no more mask mandates in their country. Canada has gone full 1984 as children are weaponized against the unvaccinated. Joe Biden held the second press conference of his presidency, and it went just as badly as you would think it would. And tensions continue to rise with Russia as the Biden administration pays more attention to Ukraine's borders than our own. Welcome back to another episode of Rapid Fire. My name is Savannah Hernandez, your host for this show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, before we get into all of this insanity and all of this breaking news, please remember to follow me on Rumble. Uh, many of you are here on YouTube. It is our biggest platform. However, the show gets taken down very often because we talk about many off-limits limits topics. So please click the link down below and go subscribe to the Rumble channel. Go and follow me on Odyssey. Go listen on podcasts. If you are a podcast listener, please leave a five-star review if you like the show. We're trying to get those numbers up because it does help us grow in the charts and helps other people find the show. So again, please go follow me on Rumble, Odyssey, all platforms. Utilize everything that you can. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Now, I want to take a peek at what's currently going on around the world because it seems that the UK, the British, for some reason, have had better decision making regarding their freedoms than we have here in the US. Very interesting on that front. Boris Johnson had this announcement to make today. Let's listen to what is currently going on in the UK. We can return to Plan A in England and allow Plan B regulations to expire. As a result, from the start of Thursday next week, mandatory certification will end. Organisations can, of course, choose to use the NHS COVID pass voluntarily, but we will end the compulsory use of COVID status certification in England. From now on, the government is no longer asking people to work from home. And people should now speak to their employers about arrangements for returning to the office. And having looked at the data carefully, the Cabinet concluded that once regulations lapse, the government will no longer mandate the wearing of face masks anywhere. Yeah. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, from, from tomorrow, from tomorrow we will no longer require face masks in classrooms yeah. and the department and the Department for Education will shortly remove national guidance uh, on their use in communal areas. In the country at large, we will continue to suggest the use of face coverings in enclosed or crowded spaces, particularly when you come into contact with people you don't normally meet, but we will trust the judgment of the British people and no longer criminalise anyone who chooses not to wear one. The government will also ease restrictions further on visits to care homes. And my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, will set out plans in the coming days. So you guys can hear that loud cheers from the, I believe it's the parliament over there. And... Boris Johnson coming out and saying that they're going to be easing those mask mandates, getting rid of them completely. How the UK is ahead of the US on that, I'm not sure. Um, but I was reading this article that says that Boris Johnson facing a mutiny says England will ease virus rules. And the reason I wanted to bring this up was just to reiterate that if you make your elected officials understand that you are angry and you will not allow them to continue in this corruption, then they're going to put a stop to it. There is much power in the people, as we are clearly seeing here with Boris Johnson. From this article, Prime Minister Boris Johnson fighting for his political life said on Wednesday that he would lift almost all remaining coronavirus restrictions in England, hoping to staunch a devastating loss of support over charges that he lied about parties in Downing Street during lockdowns. Mr. Johnson's announcement during a heated appearance in Parliament was a significant gamble by a besieged leader who was almost out of moves. It appeared to be an effort not just to change the subject, but also to win over conservative lawmakers, nearly 100 of whom rebelled against him when he imposed the measures last month. So it's not only his fellow members in 
politics that are pushing back against him. It was the people as well. We saw all of those uh, protests in the UK, people getting extremely upset with Boris Johnson because he was caught out partying and not adhering to his own lockdown restrictions. And there you guys go. The people in the UK had their voices heard and it looks a little bit more free over there. Now let's go ahead and take a peek at what's going on in Canada right now with this newest video that has been surfacing about how children are responding to and being taught about how they should respond to the unvaccinated. Let's listen. So it says, are you vaccinated? The kids say, yes, we have both one but dose. The adults ask, are you in favor of a mandatory vaccination? They all say yes. It looks like I drill them. What should we do with the people who don't want the vaccine? The adults ask. The kids say, we should call the police. Yes, yes. If they don't have the vaccine, it can make a lot of people in danger. So like what the government does right now, we should cut everything from them, little by little, until they submit and get vaccinated. And then the adult saying, looks like we have a future politician here. And then it ends with, we need help in Quebec, Canada. So that is what's going on in Canada. In the UK, they're easing up on those mask mandates and restrictions in Canada. The children, just like in the book 1984 by George Orwell, are being weaponized against the unvaccinated. Now, this is a tactic that we've seen governments previously use where children are weaponized against adults. And they're essentially uh, an extension of, I wouldn't say political parties, but they'll, they'll be used to attack adults who are not following what the government is saying to do. Going back to the book that I just referenced, 1984. The state in that story weaponized children against their parents so that parents were scared to speak out against their government or disobey their government even behind closed doors because they feared their children telling on them. So this is what we're currently seeing in Canada, and it's absolutely baffling and infuriating to me that we have children saying, yes, yes, we need to call the police. And then we have these adults that are encouraging this type of rhetoric, this type of indoctrination, behavior, thought process, and saying, yes, uh, this is so great that these children are saying that the vaccinated should be cut off from the government until they ultimately submit and get vaccinated. So that's what's going on in the UK and in Canada. Now let's jump over here to the US because Joe Biden held his second press conference of his presidency. He doesn't hold many press conferences and I'll show you why right now. While all of that's going on in other poor parts of the world, Let's go ahead and take a peek into what's going on here in America and some of what came out of Joe Biden's mouth today at his press conference, starting off with this clip about how Joe Biden thinks he may have overpromised some things, but he also has overdelivered. Yeah, if that if that sounds like a joke, it's not. Listen, days of this country are still ahead of us, not behind us. Now I'm happy to take questions. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. I know some of my colleagues will get into some specific issues, but I wanted to zoom out on your first year in office. Inflation is up. Uh, your signature domestic legislation is stalled in Congress. In a few hours from now, the Senate, uh, an effort in the Senate to deal with voting rights and voting, uh, voting reform legislation is going to fail. COVID-19 is still taking the lives of 1,500 Americans every day. And the nation's divisions are just as raw as they were a year ago. Did you overpromise to the American public what you could achieve in your first year in office? And how do you plan to course correct going forward? Why are you such an optimist? Look, I didn't overpromise, and but I have probably uh, outperformed what anybody thought would happen. Boy, what? Outperformed in what? Destroying our country in record time? Okay, I agree with you there then. And it's so funny because this wasn't just one reporter that came up to Joe Biden today and was like, so we have inflation is up, your legislation is failing, the Build Back a Better plan was a complete flop. Uh, nobody likes you. Your polls are abhorrent. Uh, we have multiple people, you know, quitting Kamala Harris's administration because reports are that she's just so awful to work for. Uh, you know, the economy is looking bad. The supply chain's not looking good. We just saw this complete destruction of the 5G rollout. We'll be getting into that because that's something that seems to be a little bit underreported here. But all of these reporters were coming up to Joe Biden and just laying out all of his failures. No one could 
could really come up with anything that he did that made this nation more prosperous over the past year as he has been president. And then what does he say? He says, I didn't overpromise, but I have probably outperformed. That is such a joke. And if we weren't being led by a vegetable who has no idea what is going on, maybe that would be surprising. Now I'm going to play another clip here so you guys can understand the cognitive decline that our president is in. And we even had reporters as well asking the question of, hey, Joe Biden, uh, many people are very worried about your mental state. Why do you think that is? His response was as Joe Biden as you would imagine it was. But um, this is a two minute clip and it's very long, but it highlights where our president is at mentally. Let's listen to where the leader of the free world is currently at. School reopenings or closures become a potent midterm issue for Republicans to win back the suburbs. Oh, I think it could be, but I hope in God that they're, uh, that, look, maybe I'm kidding myself, but as time goes on, the voter who is just trying to figure out, as I said, how to take care of their family, put three squares on the table, stay safe, be able to pay their mortgage or their rent, et cetera, uh, has, is becoming much more informed on the, um, the motives of um, some of the political players and some of the uh, and the political parties. And I think that they are not going to be as susceptible to believing some of the outlandish things that have been said and continue to be said. You know, every every president, not necessarily in the first 12 months, but every president in the first couple of years, most every president, excuse me, of the last presidents, at least four Okay, that is enough of that. But this is an entire two minute clip. It may even be longer because I believe on Twitter, you can only post a two minute and 20 second clip. So this is an extremely long interaction between Joe Biden and this member of the press where he's not even acknowledging or answering the original question that the reporter asked, but he's blinking so hard and there's nothing that anybody can do. This isn't like, you know, the normal times when the press throws out questions to Joe Biden and his administration can just come in and his staffers can come in and usher everyone out and say, no, 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 no questions, no questions, no questions. Or, you know, at the end of whenever he's done reading off of the teleprompter, when he's addressing the nation or whatnot, whenever he's live, they can just cut to black. This was a press conference with multiple media members in the room. It was live. There was no way for Joe Biden to sidestep or his staffers to try to hide his cognitive decline that is the real joe biden that is who is leading the usa and we're only one year in i really don't foresee this getting better now many of the people in this country question joe biden's cognitive fitness because we see clips like this, because we see him oftentimes making historic gas, saying outlandish and outrageous things, not understanding what's truly going on in this nation. He's completely out of touch, whether that's because he doesn't care about the American people or because he is in cognitive decline. You can decide that. But that is who is leading our country. Now, we had a reporter ask about this, and this was Joe Biden's response. Let's listen. So the question I have for you, sir, if you'd let me finish is why do you suppose such large segments of the American electorate have come to harbor such profound concerns about your cognitive fitness? Thank you. I have no idea. There you go. So, Joe, uh, people are really concerned about your mental health. Why might that be a majority of po like voters, even Democrats, are concerned? Why do you think that is? I I don't know. I, I don't know. Guy. Come on, Jack. I, I'm just out here reading the, the, the thing. I and mean, come on, guy. It's America. That's Joe Biden. That's the president of our country. And he also 
really drummed up tensions with Russia during this press conference as well. There's a couple of key things that he said um, regarding Afghanistan. He said, I make no apologies for what I did regarding the pullout there. Um, remember Joe Biden's response to Afghanistan, the withdrawal. It was absolutely abhorrent. It led to 12 of our service members being killed when their bodies were brought back to the U.S., by the way. Remember, we all saw the footage of Joe Biden looking down at his watch because apparently he had better things to do than comfort the families of the fallen service members who died because of his botched response. Remember that many of the mothers and family members of those fallen uh, service members said they didn't want Joe Biden anywhere near them. They didn't want to talk to them. They were disgusted with him. So he comes out today and says he makes no apologies for what he did. Uh, on top of that, he also basically said that uh, Putin could take part of Ukraine and that our elections are not legitimate. So that is um, what came out today regar regarding Ukraine. Joe Biden basically just said, oh, yeah, well, we think that Russia will probably, you know, go in for a minor incursion. <laughs> And regarding what's going on over there, I'm not a geopolitical analyst, so I'm just going to read this to you as news and then just ask basic common sense questions that every American should have. But but we'll start off with Russia news with this article from the AP that reads Russia moves more troops westward amid Ukraine tensions. Russia is sending an unspecified number of troops from the country's Far East to Belarus for major war games. Officials said Tuesday a deployment that will further beef up Russian military presence near Ukraine amid Western fears of a planned invasion. Amid the soaring tensions, the White House warned that Russia could attack its neighbor at any point while the UK delivered a batch of anti-tank weapons to Ukraine. From the Daily Mail, White House believes a Russian invasion of Ukraine could be imminent. Jen Psaki warns there's an extremely dangerous situation at the border ahead of Blinken's trip to meet President Zelensky of Ukraine. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki on Tuesday said Russia could again launch that attack at any point. Apologies that my computer is being slow, but this is an article from the Daily Mail that is talking about all of this. Uh, Russian troops began arriving in Belarus for exercising, raising tensions even further, and reports suggested it was pulling staff and their families out of the embassy in Kiev. So that is some of the headlines that have been coming out over the past couple of days. After Joe Biden's press conference, CNN wrote, Biden predicts Russia will move into Ukraine, but says minor incursion may prompt discussion over consequences. President Joe Biden um, cited existential concerns by the country's President Vladimir Putin, even as he acknowledged disunity within NATO over how to respond to a minor incursion. The candid assessment laid bare the struggle Biden faces in creating meaningful consequences and deterrence for Moscow, which remains closely intertwined economically with the United States' top European partners. The remark elicited near-immediate outcry in Kyiv, where officials had been been meeting with Biden's top diplomat as Russian troops amassed on the country's border. High-level attempts to clean up the comments soon followed at the White House and per Jack Posobiec, who has an insider at the White House, said a White House staffer is quoted, State Department official lines and back channels with Ukraine completely flooded. What an effing mess. And so that is a direct quote from the White House staffer that Jack Posobiec is uh, on the inside with. And like I just said, I try to pay some attention to geopolitical issues because they are important. But the basic and most common sense question that every single American should be asking here is why is Joe Biden more concerned with Ukraine's border than our own? Why is it that when Russia impedes on Ukraine's border, all of a sudden it's World War Three? It's, oh, Putin, you can't do that. Uh, we are going to back Ukraine. We will send troops. We will send military. And then we have our media over here saying that we need to protect Ukraine because they're our ally. So we're going to send U.S. troops to go defend another country's border. Meanwhile, the border in America is wide open. Are you kidding me right now? Also, it's really funny to me because remember how everyone said that we were an international laughingstock under Donald Trump and we weren't respected by world leaders. Look at how Putin is acting under Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. Think what you will about Ukrainian and Russian politics. I know it's very long and historical with all of the territories and whatnot. So I'm really not making any commentary on that front other than look at the 
difference between the way world leaders view America and are acting now that they have the power to under Trump versus under Joe Biden? And also, why is it that Joe Biden cares more about Ukrainian borders than our own? It's absolutely disgusting to see. And the fact that we're even talking about war in a foreign country, it's ridiculous. It really and truly is. If you think that I'm wrong on any of these topics, please feel free to comment below and let me know geopolitically what I need to research more so I can understand why it is essential and important for us to send U.S. troops to a foreign country. Please let me know. Now, that is what is currently going on. We are seeing Russia flexing its muscles. We are seeing China flexing its muscles. We are seeing many of these world powers. And keep in mind that Russia itself is a nuclear power as well. So going to war with them would not be a very good idea. We're seeing them all flexing their muscles, making power moves right now, right? And why do you think that is? It's because this is our U.S. military. Now, for my podcast listeners, what you are listening to is army members, all females, synchronized dancing to Beyonce. And I've seen a couple of conservative political commentators say, oh, it's just the American military having fun. You should see what men do in their barracks, like blah, blah, blah. It's just them having fun. Well, the difference between if, okay, men are doing this and they're having fun, they're cracking jokes, they're messing around versus when these women are doing it is I don't ever really see TikToks of our male military members out here synchronized dancing. Do you think that Russia or China see this video and say, oh, uh, U.S. military is just having fun. They are still superpower. We, we are still scared of them. No, they see this type of video and they say the U.S. military is a joke. And if we want to go and impose in the U.S. and flex our muscles, we can do so because that's who's defending them. It's a joke. This is not what should be coming out of our U.S. military. And at the core of it as well, if you want to look at the different types of advertisements that are coming out of the U.S. military versus Russian military, Look at the stark contrast. The U.S. is saying, well, if you have two moms and anxiety issues and are a part of the LGBTQIA community, we really want to welcome you into the Army um, because we want you to feel included. And we're going to make sure that instead of really training up the Navy SEALs and the best and the brightest in our military to be as strong and competent as possible, we're all going to make you sit through diversity classes and we're going to lower our standards for what it takes to become a Navy SEAL or a Marine so that women can also join and everyone is included in it's a big, happy party. So that's what's going on here in the U.S. And then Russia's like, yeah, we want strong men who can break other men in half with their arms. So just understand the stark difference there. And when you see these types of videos, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, this is just military members having fun. Now, this is a projection of what the U.S. military has turned into. And we are not feared. We are still a world superpower, I guess. But we're not feared by our counterparts, which is why we are seeing our foreign enemies, if you will, flexing their muscles. I wouldn't even necessarily say Russia is our enemy. I don't think that they are per se. I would say that a lot of our interpretation of Russia is based on our media and our media drumming up these fears around them. And I think that our political response as well has a lot to do with, uh, you know, again, the tensions, the relationship there. So that is what is going on with our international politics, okay? So Joe Biden, incompetent, has no idea what's going on. Uh, internationally, Russia is uh, trying to apparently invade in Ukraine. Joe Biden says, oh, yeah, there may be a minor incursion. We're just looking, you know, for that to happen. Who knows what's going to go on there? And like I said, there are talks for us to potentially send U.S. troops over there to go defend their border. Meanwhile, ours is wide open. Uh, also, infrastructure-wise, because remember that infrastructure was something that was on the forefront of the Biden administration. We have uh, Pete Buttigieg, who is our... I don't even know what he does. What is his official title? Let me look that up really quick so we can have some uh, journalistic integrity here. Uh, Pete Buttigieg, United States Secretary of Transportation. So this is probably a story that should be looked at or confronted by the U.S. Secretary of Transportation. But of course, Secretary Pete Buttigieg silent on all of this as um, airlines worldwide 
including the long-haul carrier Emirates, are rushing to cancel or change flights heading into the U.S. over the rollout of 5G mobile phone technology. And apparently uh, AT&T and Verizon said they are going to postpone that 5G rollout near some airports, but apparently these towers causing so many problems with airplanes and blocking those radar signals, not allowing these pilots and uh, people flying these planes to be able to access the potentially life-saving equipment and technology that are in their planes required to help them land. So that's what's going on right now um, with these 5G towers from the Washington Post, AT&T and Verizon to limit 5G network rollout near airports after airlines warn of major disruptions. Jack Posobiec tweets out Japan, India, and Emirates Airlines canceling flights to U.S. over 5G activation near airports. Mayor Pete AOL, A AWOL. <clears throat> Hey, oh, well, <laughs> wrong, wrong type of uh, thing there. Biden says Verizon and AT&T will now indefinitely delay the rollout. And um, of course, people asking if, or he was asking if anybody at the press conference today would ask Joe Biden about that. A reporter did bring it up and basically said that the uh, 5G rollout has been one of the most disastrous things that we've ever seen. Also, the Emirates president saying the exact same thing. The 5G snafu is the biggest screw up I've witnessed in my career. The president of Emirates tells CNN that the airline was not aware of some of the potential 5G rollout issues until yesterday morning, calling the situation one of the most delinquent, utterly irresponsible he has seen is in his entire aviation career with major airlines, international airlines scrambling to modify or cancel flights to the U.S. amid uncertainty about potential interference between new 5G cell phone services and critical airplane technologies. Emirates has canceled flights to nine U.S. destinations today. So that's what's currently going on with our um, transportation and infrastructure here in the U.S. and also many people pointing out too this rollout of 5G and the 5G towers and the different types of signals that they emit. Now, normally you can't really talk about this without getting banned off the face of the earth. But many people bringing up the question, if this is what these 5G signals are doing to technology and airplanes, what are they potentially doing to people, let's say, because there's really not any research that's been conducted into this, which reminds me of this older article from back in 2019 that not many people have heard of, I'm sure. This comes from the Daily Mail. Cell phone towers shut down at elementary school after eight kids are diagnosed with cancer in mysterious cluster. The affected students at Weston Elementary School in Ripon are all under the age of 10. They each had different types of cancer, brain, kidney, liver, and lymphoma. There is scant evidence that the cell phone towers pose a real risk to humans. However, it was very strange that eight of these kids were diagnosed with cancer um, around the exact same time once that 5G tower went up. A private investigator for the patient's moms found the levels were higher than reported, talking about um, this Sprint tower, which had shut down despite insisting the radio, radio frequency levels were 100 times below the federal limit. So, there's the pictures there of all of these little kids. You guys can go look into these types of stories and articles for yourself. I would highly suggest that you do because this is something that many people have pointed out. You're not allowed to talk about it because apparently it's a conspiracy theory. But so were the vaccines being safe and effective for everybody. Seems like long-term research is something that could be very valuable to human health, but we don't do that in modern day society because the scientists and doctors tell us to just trust them. And so we do blindly. So that's what's going on on that front of the world. One of the many angles that we were being attacked with. And let's go ahead and transition into the extreme uptick in crime rates over the past couple of years. We saw the defund the police movement was very successful. And now we are reaping the consequences of all of that. Let's go ahead and start off with Brianna Kupfer, who was brutally stabbed to death while working at a furniture store in Los Angeles. She was a 24-year-old architecture design student. Sean Laval Smith was Brianna's killer. He's a career criminal and was out on a $1,000 bail at the time of the murder. And there is that criminal right there for you from the Daily Mail. Masked suspect and fatal stabbing of UCLA student Brianna Kupfer is filmed buying a vape pen at 7-Eleven 30 minutes after murder. Cops revealed she texted her friend to say a man was giving her a bad vibe before she was killed in the LA furniture store. So she was working alone, and then apparently this man came in here, 
and just murdered her. That's L.A. Brianna's father slammed politicians for exposing communities to people that are falling out the bottom. Todd Kupfer said leaders in Los Angeles have been championing people that rob others of their rights. L.A. District Attorney George Gaskin is under fire for failing to crack down on violence amid crime surges and homicides in Los Angeles rose 52 percent last year from 2019 and shooting incidents were up 59 percent. Now, I would love to give this story more time, but we have way too many other stories just like this one, heartbreaking as that is. For example, family says unknown gunman has shut up their Georgia home three different times. I should have downloaded this video for you guys so you could have physically seen the footage here. But basically, this black man walks up to this family's home in Georgia and just shoots at their house. There's the footage right there, just shoots at the house, runs away. Apparently, this happened three separate times. That's what's going on in Georgia. Uh, from Border Hawk News on Twitter, illegal aliens are committing horrifying crimes every day across the U.S. Uh, with some of these headlines reading, media blackout, New York City robbery and murder suspect is actually criminal alien living on welfare. Man caught smuggling nearly 30 illegal aliens in Texas. Illegal alien charged with raping two little girls in California. And police officer injured in DUI crash by previously arrested illegal alien. Now, we also have a psychopath, Winston Glenn, who shot a woman to death at a Burger King. Now we're going back to L.A. because that's what's happening over there. He's saying he's calling for reparations because he claims to be the victim of historical oppression and 400 years of white supremacy. He was involved with the senseless, brutal killing of a New York City Burger King worker. So as you guys can see, this is Crystal Bayron Nieves. She's 19 years old. This gunman demanded that she give him cash. She handed the cash over and he shot her anyway. So that is what is, oh, I apologize. I said that this was in LA. This was actually in New York City. My apologies on that front. That's what's going on in New York. We covered LA. We went into Georgia a little bit. Now we're in New York City. Um, Thoughts and condolences to all of the families that are having to unfortunately deal with the consequences of the defund the police movement of these corrupt district attorneys who continue to allow career criminals out on these ridiculously low bills. We saw what happened in Waukesha where Daryl Brooks, who was also out on a ridiculously low bail, went and mowed down white people who were at a Christmas parade. He had ties to Black Lives Matter and anti-white sentiment. He was let out by, I believe it was um, the Milwaukee District Attorney, John Chishol. I believe that's who that was. Many people outraged that this criminal was released, but we haven't learned our lesson, and this is still the modern day. From the New York Post, a deranged man pushes an Asian woman to death at Times Square subway station. A deranged homeless man allegedly shoved an Asian woman to her death in front of an oncoming subway train Saturday morning in Times Square. The horrifying episode unfolded at 9 a.m., just nine minutes after the man was caught on video on the platform. So apparently this was Michelle Alyssa Go, who was 40 years old. Um, police are saying that the incident was unprovoked and the victim does not appear to have any interaction with the subject. And how did the new mayor of New York City respond to this? Mayor Eric Adams, who replaced Bill de Blasio, he said, what happened? Or he said, um... This Sorry, this headline's a little bit confusing. The headline actually reads, What happened to the law and order candidate? New York City Mayor Eric Adams is lashed for insisting subway is safe and it's only a perception of danger after a female executive, 41, was pushed to her death in front of the train. New York City Mayor Eric Adams told residents that the Big Apple subways are safe and critics have slammed the mayor for, the mayor for saying that they have a perception of fear. So... That is how your politicians respond when your loved one, your family member, your brother, sister, cousin are brutally murdered by a homeless man. Their houses are shot out for no reason. They are working at Burger King and they get shot up for no reason by a career criminal. That is what the average politician is saying. Oh, well, it just really seems like this perception of danger and you really need to calm down.
So that's what's going on across the country right now. And again, I could genuinely do an entire hour long show showing you guys the statistics of the upticks in homicide rates. Remember this article that came out at the end of last year from ABC News. It's just crazy. 12 major cities hit all time homicide records. Police officials saying it's worse than a war zone around here lately. And those cities included all Democrat run St. Paul, Minnesota, Portland, Oregon, Tucson, Arizona, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Louisville, Kentucky, Austin, Texas, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Philadelphia, Rochester, Indianapolis, 12 major cities hitting that all time homicide record. And then if we go ahead and look back at uh, LA as well, just to kind of give you guys a peek and understanding that it's not just the homicide rates that have seen an increased uptick. It's also this rise in theft and in crime. Now, John Schreiber, who is a reporter and photojournalist locally in Los Angeles, said that he kept hearing about train burglaries in L.A. on the scanner. So we went to Lincoln Heights to see it all. And there's looted packages as far as the eye can see. Let me go ahead and play you this B-roll as I tell you this story. So if you're a podcast listener, the imagery that I am showing right now is the Lincoln Heights train station. And there are packages littered as far as the eye can see for potentially what looks like miles. Amazon packages, UPS boxes, unused COVID tests, fishing lures, EpiPens, cargo containers left busted open on trains. Apparently, this reporter was told by law enforcement that UPS bags are especially sought after by thieves opening cargo containers. They are often full of boxes with merchandise bound for residential addresses, more valuable than, say, a cargo container full of low-value bulky items like toilet paper. So that is the footage that you guys are currently seeing here. That's the absolute state of Los Angeles. That is the absolute state of... Democrat run cities and we see this beautiful picture of the Los Angeles skyline but then you look down at that train station and it's captioned it's not the third world it's your world this is Los Angeles in 2022 this is the ultimate end to Democrat rule Democrat legislation and Democrat policies they push this utopia where everyone is happy and we're all living in this great world and you know we're gonna stop um we're gonna have criminal bail reform and jail reform and all this great stuff it's just really unfair because the black community is disproportionately affected so we're gonna let these criminals out what happens people are getting murdered in the street and you can't do anything about it the police can't help you no one can help you and then on top of that you always have democrats petitioning to take away guns from law-abiding citizens who are using it to protect themselves from the lawlessness and chaos that has been allowed to fester because of bad democrat policies so that's what's going on on that front. Uh, let's keep going. Let's talk about the COVID angle of what's going on in our country right now. Because unlike the UK, we are still being faced with ridic ridiculous mask mandates and businesses that are still instituting forced vaccination despite the Supreme Court striking down Biden's OSHA mandate and saying that businesses are not required to force vaccinate their employees, uh, Carhartt has been facing backlash for keeping vaccine mandate despite Supreme Court ruling. They put out this letter today, or this was actually yesterday, I believe. Let's see. Yep, it was yesterday. Carhartt put out this letter saying Carhartt Associates, many of you have asked how the recent Supreme Court decision on the OSHA mandate for large employers will impact our associates. So we want to provide some clarity. The ruling does not change Carhartt's mandatory vaccination program. So there you guys go. Cancel Carhartt, boycott this company. They are disgusting. They're anti-American. And I hope and pray that if you are listening to this broadcast, that you will not spend one more dime at this un-American, unconstitutional business who does not truly care about their employees at all or their associates, because if they did, they would allow them to have freedom of choice. Now, Carhartt forcing that vaccination, Starbucks, ultra-liberal Starbucks, is dropping their vaccine mandate after SCOTUS's ruling, which... It's not something that many of us expected to see, but here it is, Starbucks dropping that vaccine mandate. And the funniest part about this story as well is that 
hashtag boycott Starbucks was trending on Twitter today because liberals were upset that Starbucks was not going to be forcing their employees to get vaccinated. So that's the liberal left for you. They don't want you to own your own children. They don't want you to own your own body. They don't want you to have any freedoms. They want you to be subservient and dependent upon the government. We hate to see it, but that's who they are. That's why we saw on our last show, by the way, you can only find that on Rumble or podcast. If you guys missed it, I interviewed a nurse and a father regarding, you know, what kids are going through with COVID nonsense and what's really going on in our hospitals. I would highly suggest you guys go watch that episode. It's not here on YouTube, unfortunately. But I talked about on that last show how the Occupy Democrats Twitter account was saying, oh, well, uh, Nike is forcing their employees to get vaccinated and we stand by this decision and we really love Nike. We applaud not Nike for taking away the freedom of their employees and threatening to fire them, threatening their livelihoods. We love to see it. So that's the liberal left for you there. But many people are pushing back. For example, uh, Representative Matt Gates says as a result of their compliance requiring the VAX papers for entry, I am canceling my membership at the Capitol Hill Club. So this is the type of action that I do love to see. This is great of Matt Gates setting the standard and leading the way and charge forward and not supporting these businesses, not supporting these clubs, not supporting these entities that are trying to take away medical freedom from anybody especially when we're seeing every single day the continuation of the narrative continuing to crumble all around us regarding vaccination, regarding booster shots. Uh, for example, one of the top World Health Organization scientists came out and said that um, there's no evidence that healthy children and adolescents need COVID-19 booster shots. Let's listen. Um, against Omicron, many of the vaccines have shown a reduction in efficacy against uh, infection. And that's why we see a lot of breakthrough infections, but these are mostly um, not resulting in severe disease. So, uh, so that's a positive. Um, there is some waning which occurs over a period of time. And we've seen that uh, there's a slight drop in the protection, again, mostly against infection, but also a little bit against uh, the severe disease. And we need more of those studies. We need to follow this out. And that is why we've said putting all of this together the aim is to protect the most vulnerable, to protect. Okay, that's enough of that, but there we go. Last week, it was CDC officials coming out and saying that the effectiveness of certain products can vary. It was the CEO of Pfizer saying, hey, maybe this doesn't work after all. Now it's the World Health Organization coming out and saying the exact same thing because they realize the narrative is crumbling all around them and that people are hungry for the truth. They want to know what's going on and they will find these studies. They will find the reality about what's going on, whether or not these officials decide to tell us about it or not. Also from Bloomberg today, uh, early Omicron breakthroughs show mRNA vaccines weakness. Booster shots with messenger RNA vaccines, such as those made by Pfizer, failed to block Omicron in a study of some of the first documented breakthrough cases caused by the highly contagious variant. But don't worry, guys, because remember that the Pfizer CEO said that they are going to make a vaccine specific to the Omicron variant. So there you guys go. Just keep lining up. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Of course, no long-term studies into this. So we're seeing an uptick in uh, myocarditis and pericarditis, but we're not allowed to talk about that. Of course, we're still going to on this show because the fact that we have the healthiest people in the world Olympic athletes, tennis players, hockey players, soccer players, just <clears throat> soccer players, just falling over with heart palpitations and heart problems is very worrisome. Uh, this is the latest Instagram post from another Olympic athlete who has gotten pericarditis. This is Olympian athlete Sarah Atcho, who shares that. She got her booster vac vaccination on December 22nd because she didn't want to struggle with this when the season started. She was told that it was safer to get Pfizer, even though she had previously had Moderna, to avoid cardiac effects. On December 27th, she felt a tightness in her chest and started feeling dizzy while walking up the stairs. This happened a few more times until she decided to check with a cardiologist who diagnosed her with pericarditis. She said she's now not allowed to get her heart rate up for a few weeks to allow her heart to rest and heal from the inflammation. And she's still doing everything she can with her coach to keep her muscles moving. She says that she's upset at the situation and she's 
and that basically um, we don't talk enough about the side effects. This comes from her official Instagram account. Her name is Sarah Acho, A-T-C-H-O, if you guys want to go look that up. And she is an Olympic athlete. So that's what's currently going on. Also, uh, let me play this B-roll for you. We had Australian Open tennis players rushing to the aid of a ball kid who collapsed at the Australian Open. Many people wondering what that was about, wondering what that was tied to. It was a very scary thing that happened, and we're continuing to see many of these types of videos of people coming out where they're just falling down. Healthy, young individuals, athletes, the top of their game the healthiest among us, just falling over, clutching their chest. Am I saying that this is tied to anything specific? No, I'm saying that there's been a big uptick in it, and it's very alarming and disturbing. We're seeing this happen as we see the mass rollout of the vaccination. And Many people who are getting vaccinated are still getting COVID, but we're being told, well, if you get COVID and you are vaccinated, you won't die from it. From the Washington Examiner, ESPN host Stephen Smith returned on Monday explaining he was hospitalized last month with COVID-19. Doctors told me had I not been vaccinated, I wouldn't be here. That's how bad I was. I had pneumonia in both lungs. And I want to read this story to you guys a little bit because his experience with COVID was absolutely insane. And this is what he went through after having been vaccinated. He said, for me personally, it hit different. Doctors told me had I not been vaccinated, I wouldn't be here. I had pneumonia in both lungs. My liver was bad. It ravaged me to the point where even now I have to monitor my volume, get to the gym every day. I'm still not 100% with my lungs. He added he had a 103 degree fever and woke up in pools of sweat. And he still thanks the vaccine for saving his life. Now we're told that your side effects are going to be much less severe if you have the vaccination, doesn't seem to be the case for this man here who still thanks the vaccine, despite the fact that it sounds like he went through verifiably worse symptoms and side effects than, for example, I'll just, you know, use myself as evidence. I didn't go to the hospital when I got COVID. I'm a healthy young person. I didn't get vaccinated. I got COVID. I didn't even go to the doctor. I was sick for a solid two weeks. I was fine. Here I am. I survived. This man vaccinated because he's told that the vaccination would lessen his symptoms, make them less severe, keep him from being hospitalized, who's still hospitalized with extremely severe symptoms and is still dealing with the repercussions. Explain to me how that works. I don't know. And because we are so brainwashed as a society and because we've been so lied to, we are still living through one of the most insane times ever. And this is what the average day looks like for people around America. We're going to start off with Ari, who says that she lives in Washington and her six-year-old is not allowed to take his mask off for speech therapy in school. The therapist is also masked. She said that her son can't see the therapist's mouth demonstrate anything. She can't see his. I went on the radio in Seattle. I'm trying to change this. Please share. So that is what is currently going on in Washington. Sagar Ngenti, who is a podcast host, he's been in the media for quite a while now, says a John Hopkins student who is vaccinated, contracted COVID twice, and received a medical exemption for a booster based upon hospitalization history, has provided me with proof that the university has rejected his doctor's exemption and intends to expel him if he doesn't get his booster. That's what life is like for your average American. From Candace Owens, a friend of mine, board-certified surgeon in Virginia, prescribed his patient ivermectin for something unrelated to COVID. The pharmacy called to inform him the prescription was blocked by the U.S. FDA. The FDA is utterly compromised in earning money to block drugs on the market. So there you guys go, preventative treatments that may not even be used for COVID, so dangerous that they're now being blocked by the FDA. FDA. <clears throat> Lauren Chen. She lives in Canada, says my family was just told by a dog groomer that they're only accepting dogs from vaccinated households. And if you think that it gets any more sane, I, I, I wish I could say it does. I wish I could say that's the end of that. But we have TikToks coming out of Australia. And this is the average mindset, the average day for Australians. And this is how our average young person is thinking because they've been so indoctrinated. Watch this video. Okay, so now lockdown's over, should we go out and do something on the weekend? I mean, they need Spider Man movies coming out. Well, that is true. <laughs> and then. Lockdown? Great idea. Great 
idea. <laughs> hey, 256 Spider-Man, please. Sure thing. Can I just see your vaccination certificates first, please? Of course. Here you go. Oh, my parents haven't let me get vaccinated yet. I mean, you're over 14. You don't actually need to get their permission. I don't. Want to go do it now? Go on a back date? That's not fun. Cool. Let's go. Ready for your vaccine today? Yeah. Can I just see your arm? Thank you. Old time. See, that wasn't too bad, was it? No, thank you. By the way, you're the waiting room, and if you have any Alright, I think this video just gave me cancer. I'm not joking. If you're a podcast listener, you're so lucky that you just didn't have to watch that. Oh my gosh, I want to gouge my eyes out. That was potentially the most woke vaccine propaganda I've ever seen in my life. So you have two lesbians trying to go on a date to the movies. And then one of the lesbians, who's only 14 years old, said her parents won't let her get vaccinated. And then her lesbian girlfriend is like, oh, I guess just her girlfriend. Lesbian would already be implied, says, let's go on a vax date. You don't need permission from your parents. Then they go get vaccinated from a woman in a hijab and then... They all flip their hair at the end. The woman nurse flips her hijab, scarf, whatever the hell. And then they skip out of the clinic into the LGBTQ rainbow sunset. I don't know why I wanted to end the show on that. I've lost all hope for humanity. All hope. I really have. Let's go through a couple more stories before I end the show here today. Uh, For example, Hong Kong suspects that hamsters in the first animal to human transmission in Hong Kong are spreading COVID and they will now call 2,000 hamsters. Pet shops and owners ordered to hand over all hamsters bought since December 22nd. Out of concern, a pet shop employee was infected with the Delta variant. So there you guys go. In uh, Hong Kong, they're now murdering little hamsters because apparently hamsters are super spreaders. We are into year three of this nonsense. We're still killing innocent animals over ridiculous COVID protocols. And um, that is our everyday life in modern day america modern day canada modern day australia new zealand take your pick the uk seems to be the only ones who kind of are headed in the right direction but that's because boris johnson has done such an important job that he finally has to listen to the people over there and stop being a psychopath and trying to lock people down with unscientific nonsense so there you guys go that's where we're currently at in america And why do we consistently see no change being made in our country? Look at this tweet. So it's the GOP's official Twitter account, and it says, The D.C. vaccine mandate went into effect this weekend. This mandate disproportionately hurts minority communities in D.C. No vaccine mandate. And then it gets retweeted by Eric Swalwell, who says, Oh, you guys care about minority communities? Cool. Stop blocking blocking voting rights. So a couple of things I want to point out here. I don't know why the GOP does this dumbass thing where they try to take the vaccine mandate and turn it into a racial issue when it's not a racial issue. This vaccine mandate disproportionately affects every freedom loving American. So GOP, stop trying to get clicks and stop trying to pander. That's exactly what we hate from the Democrats. And just say that the vaccine mandates are bad for everyone. Stop trying to make it a racial issue to Eric Swalwell. Shut the hell up, guy. Literally, why the hell are you in Congress? You are are literally useless outside of being used for Chinese spies to get intel on America. Okay, minority communities stop blocking voting rights again because the Senate the Senate Democrats suffered a defeat on the voting rights bill because they were they were voting to uh, change the rules and uh, Democrat Senator Kristen Cinema Sin- and Joe Manchin they joined the GOP in sinking the filibuster change. For that voting bill to this day, no one can answer the question of what voting rights are being hindered or obstructed here in America. Who has ever been stopped from voting in an election in this country? Literally no one. So when Eric Swalwell is like, oh, you care about minorities? Then stop trying to block voting rights. 
What rights are being blocked? What rights are being obstructed? GOP, stop trying to pander to minority communities and spreading this BS that affects everybody equally. Eric Swoboda and the Democrats, nobody is having their right to vote obstructed, so shut the hell up. This is who is leading our country. This is the two-party system, and it is a complete and utter failure. Luckily for us, our senators came through. They shut down all of that nonsense because as we all can clearly see, we don't need to change any more voting bills or voting laws. Everything is fine the way it is. But I am so tired of having to continuously cut through the lies of the media and our politicians and all of these fake narratives. It's truly exhausting. It really is. And while crime rates continue to rise across the nation, we have an incompetent president who doesn't even know what's going on. We have pretend voting rights being obstructed. What's going on here? I, I don't know. It just, it's baffling to me. How did we get so degraded as a society to be led by these people. Last story that I'll bring up for the show from New York Post. Governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, wants transgender inmates to choose where they're housed in prison. And if this is not just the bright red cherry on top of the BS Sunday that was just served up to you in this show, I'm sorry that I had to highlight all of the nonsense that you and I are both living through. I don't know what is. So... Basically, what the governor of New York is saying, um, yes, people are being violently murdered in front of subways. Yes, there is a huge uptick in crimes and people are being shot at Burger Kings. Young teenagers can't even go to work. But we're going to focus on the things that matter, uh, allowing men to identify as women so they can go rape women in prison. Great. Welcome to the modern day. Nothing makes sense. Pray for this country, everybody, because we are not headed in a good direction. We saw what happened to this entire country, our economy, our supply chain, everything. After just one year of Joe Biden, what is three more years of this nonsense going to look like? I pray for our country every single day. I pray for every single citizen globally who is still living under COVID tyranny and nonsense. Remember every single day to live an active rebellion of your government, whether that means not wearing a face mask or telling somebody that you will not show them your vaccine pass passport because it's none of their business. Live an active rebellion of your government every single day. Thank you for tuning into another episode of Rapid Fire. Again, please follow me on Rumble, Odyssey, and Podcast. If you like the show on podcast, give it a five-star review. And please share it with your friends. The community is growing. And that is all thanks to each and every single one of you who share the show and continue to tune in. I cannot thank you enough. My name is Savannah Hernandez, and I'll see you next time. All right, y'all, let's get into some super chats now. Now that I am done, just throwing that barrage of complete BS at you guys. Ay, 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 I really cannot deal with the modern day. I was lying on my couch at 9 p.m. and I was like, I'm so exhausted and I don't even want to talk about any of this nonsense today. But then we rallied and I think we had a good show. I'm sorry I stumbled and mumbled a bit. Uh, I have days where sometimes my... Um, Annunciation is very bad. I feel like today was one of those days. So sorry, friends. Sorry. Okay, let's get into some super chats here. Um, starting off with James, who says, Hi, Sev. James, I didn't even see that you were in the chat. Oh my gosh, you guys, my friend James Klug, I love him so much. If you guys are not following James Klug, what are you even doing? Um, he's probably not here anymore, but uh, he's my good friend. He lives out in California. He does amazing man on the street videos. Go give James a follow. James Klug, great guy. Uh, Savvy D says, Braves fan here. Anyways, your content is really good. You do your homework. Keep it up. The world needs it. Thank you, Savvy D. A fellow Sav, I absolutely love to see it. I've never seen you in the chat before, so thank you so much for your contribution. And um, all right, Braves fan, I can respect that. If you were a Giants fan, I would immediately eject you from the chat, but I can, I can uh, deal with the Braves fan. Daniel sends in a super sticker. Thank you, Daniel. Sam Ham says, great show. Never stop calling out the BS we're going through. Cheers. Thank you, Sam the Ham. I appreciate it. I will never stop. Uh, there's days where I really just feel overwhelmed and I'm like, what is, why, why? But, you know, it's all worth it when we're cutting through all the lies and BS and we see what's really going on here. Um, Cody Arnold says, have you verified that the army video is the army? 
I'm pretty sure that it is. It's been very widely shared. They're all in army t-shirts and they're in their barracks. So uh, outside of, I mean, that, I'll verify it even further for you and get back to you on that one. Uh, but for the most part, every single time I do play videos on this show, yes, I try to make sure that they're like verified videos. Uh, Menuleo 101 says 13 out of 50. I don't know what that means, but thank you, Menuleo. Uh, Jeff Ohefo says, you know, honestly, I could go for a couple of old-fashioned train robberies straight from the 1800s. I like the idea of a surprise Amazon package. Good Lord, Jeff Ohefo. Good Lord. B. Rogers. Hi, Sab. What are your thoughts on Den Crenshaw? I've been pretty disappointed lately. I deleted my last super chat because my spelling was so bad. I don't like Dan Crenshaw. I think that he is a rhino. I think that he is a neocon and that he is trying to perpetuate never-ending wars um, that our U.S. troops will be involved in that he can monetize on and make money off of while they go off and die. So I don't like Dan Crenshaw. I really don't, really don't like him at all. I don't think that he stands up for the American people every single time he's asked a hard question. He answers back very aggressively. Look at how your elected official or any politician speaks to an American constituent and understand with that response how they really view you. So I don't like them. Many Leo 101 says, my university mandated the booster. I sent them an email explaining why I disapprove of the mandate, but they don't respond. Keep hounding them, Many Alea. Keep on hounding them. Protest them. Get other students who believe what you believe. Make it a big deal. Make it national news. You let me know. Even email me, sasscontact at gmail.com. Um, and I will highlight this as well because university students do need to push back against this complete insanity, and I'll help you out in any way that I can. CC says, I heard for Valentine's Day, Elijah is going to raffle himself to a lucky listener for a date night. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Uh, date night with Elijah Schaefer. Have fun. He, he's a talker. He, he probably would be fun on a date night. Avenger Crosby says, Owen Schroyer. Clearly, I got amongst men. Uh, all right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to another show. I always have a really great time sitting here and talking with you guys and, you know, just living through life. Many of you are asking about my friend James. His name is James Klug, last name K-L-U-G. Great friend. He's awesome to follow. Jorge Ventura, The Daily Caller, another good friend of mine, great to follow. Lots of great people in the space, so go follow him. Go um, show some love for, you know, my fellow reporters. It'll be good. Also, who's going to be in D.C. this weekend? I will be there to cover the anti- vaccine mandate rally in Washington, D.C. this weekend, so it should be good. All right, guys, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Thank you all for your contributions. If you'd also like to support me in other ways, I have my Locals channel down below where you can become a subscriber on that platform, or you can send me anything on PayPal. All contributions go back into the show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You are all the best, and I'll see you next time.